Welcome. We're going to be using the old schedule for um, saints today because of the fact that um, when Saint Kateri was made a saint, um, she received this day, but this day used to belong to Saint Camillus de Lillis, and so we'll be looking at him today in that my book doesn't have Kateri yet. <laughs> so uh, if you want to send some money for us to get new books, <laughs> we'll be happy to receive them. Anyway, St. Callis de Lillis, a priest, he was born in 1550 and died in 1614. Son of a soldier of the Kingdom of Naples, he was, believe it or not, in that time in 1500s, six foot six and exceptionally strong. He became a soldier, led a life without a restraint, and at the age of 25 came with broken body to an incurable hospital in Rome. And so these, uh, there Camillus was converted to Christ in penance, began serving the sick, and though still incurably ill himself, gathered others to his work and started the company of servants of the sick. They're now called hospitalers or chameleons. And he became a priest and to the end of his life, um, a sick giant among the sick lived out the ideal of Christian charity. He was canonized in 1746. So we remember today, at least here at the TV station, St. Camillus de Lillis, a priest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, you gave St. Camillus a special love for the sick. Through his prayers, inspire us with your grace so that by serving you in our brothers and sisters, we may come safely to you at the end of our lives. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to be looking at uh, the book of the prophet Isaiah. The book of Isaiah is a complicated classic. Um, chapters 1 to 39 go back to the ministry of Isaiah himself from 400, uh, 742 to 700 and to a time when the uh, northern kingdom uh, collapsed. Now we read an early sermon of Isaiah. He calls the nation Sodom and Gomorrah, ancient wicked cities, and calls for social justice rather than show sacrifice. So we hear this scripture today from the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of whole burnt rams and fat of fatlings. In the blood of calves, lambs, and goats, I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling of assemblies, octaves with wickedness. These I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest. They weigh me down. I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wronged. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. You know, St. John Chrysostom, he was the great Archbishop of Constantinople in the fourth century, often preached about um, the gap between worshiping Christ in church and then ignoring his presence among the poor. 
true worshiper means recognizing Christ in the church and also in the world outside. What good, he asked his congregation, does it do you if the altar of Christ is covered in golden vessels while Christ himself suffers hunger in the lives of the poor? Um, you know, we note that in the second Eucharistic prayer, um, we continually say, um, allowing us to minister to you. And really then, it's realizing that God is in every person. And so we're being called to minister to other people. And in ministering to others, we are ministering to God who is also present in them. So the prophet Isaiah today makes the same point. He knows the law taught the, that God was a God of justice. He seems the people coming to the temple performing endless sacrifices and multiplying their prayers. But this is a false worship because those very same people are breaking God's law in the way they ignore the demands of justice. So God does not condemn worship in himself, but in expects it to lead to action. So we come to church on Sunday and uh, we are worshiping God, but to just go home and do nothing during the week um, really is um, not following what the gospel message says, uh, or do we use the energy that comes to us from the worshiping service to go out and to do God's work, um, to care for one another. So um, we then are really, really called to look at who we are God does not condemn worship in itself, we mentioned, but expects it to lead to some type of action. Help the oppressed, be just uh, to the orphans, and plead for the widows. Jesus, like Isaiah, condemned attempts to settle for false peace, which tries to paper over the sins of society rather than to deal with those sins. Not much has changed, really. Religion can still be used as a way of blessing the status quo. We seem to think that we can uh, keep God happy by just going to church and praying all uh, of our sets of prayers. But true religion means that we worship in church a God who expects us to care for those of God's creation who are in danger of losing their humanity through poverty or illness. Christ shares himself with us in the Mass so that we may learn to share ourselves with those in need. And so maybe that's why sisters like the Holy Cross began their hospitals. Um, they were out in the middle of um, helping soldiers lying in the grass uh, during the Civil War. And so they themselves were reaching out uh, to those who were ill um, and uh, treating them as human beings, not as just something um, that belonged because they were not selective in, in who they um, nursed. They did the North and the South. It's wherever they found themselves. Um, so really, you, you and I are being called by the fact that we are Christian and following Christ Jesus to not only worship him on Sunday, but to do some type of work for those who are in need. The sisters have power, um, Holy the Cross Holy Center. Cross Center. <clears throat> and that's, right. um, that's just one of the many things that they're doing to reach out to the poor and the needy and the ill. Um, but what are we doing who are the normal parishioners in a parish? We put our money in a basket and then um, to support the church. Um, and then we go out um, home and never involve ourselves in any type of ministry. And that in itself is really not living the gospel. We have many opportunities in our parishes if we just ask and look. I've seen uh, the bulletins in many parishes beyond, besides my own, St. Paul Newman Center, and I see, you know, 20, 30 ministries that outreach to those people in need. And we find that where's the connection? Time and talent, then treasure. So uh, time and talent are important to be giving in your parish in order for the parish to be seen as a Christian community. Bye-bye.